<laughs> By the way, Steve Summers is on the hotline. Stevie, what's up, buddy? I just want you to know that uh, you are now hearing from me. Yes. <laughs> and uh, you have to remember when you first came to join Boomer. Yes. That there was one person that greeted you and wished you good luck. And who was that? The only person that worked on this radio station that made a point of wishing Boomer and I good luck was my main man, Stevie Summers. Yeah, and I listen to you guys every day. And, uh, and late at night, overnight, under the covers... I uh, mentioned what you broke uh, about Chapman with the A's. There you go. Uh, you made the call, and uh, so forth. So I've talked about both of you guys. I apologize. I just, I miss you. Yeah, I, I, it would be nice to see you, but uh, I don't, you know, I mean, uh, we have such opposite ends of the hours. But, I mean, I listen to you guys, uh, you know, every day, and uh, I've alluded to you both. Overnight, under the covers, a number of stuff, and with a number of things that you guys break and bring up for the first time, heard all day long. And that carries sometimes after a game uh, or before a game with JJ that comes on after you, and then, you know, even it carries with some of the calls I first take overnight. So, you, know, you guys are. You sound, uh, you sound terrific. Well, so do you. And, I know. Yeah, so do you. And I, I, <laughs> I mean, I agree. Thank you. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I know a lot of people thought, well, when Evan is going to join you, is it going to be a little bit different? You know, how is he going to adapt? And I think, you know, the two of you together as one come across real well. And I think that was the number one thing about how Evan and you were going to get along. And obviously, you get along great. Well, we appreciate that. Like I told everyone... You know, you have to fight. It takes a little time to get used to one another, get in a comfort zone. Right. But uh, you're very blessed to have the opportunity. And uh, Stevie Summers was my main man and uh, was the, one of the only So people. you're saying I never wished you luck? The only person. I never wished you luck. The only person that works at I saw FAN. You? That's BS. Was Steve Summers. No, I believe Steve did it. He's one of the classiest guys he out was there. He's the only but guy. But you're that... saying I and Joe never said a Correct. word to you? I find that hard to believe. When we first started, all the way back in September of 2007. Every other show went out of their way to curry favor to Mike and Chris. That's not And to stand true. in the way of our That's success. That's not true. Except for one man. One man came on the air and said, well, I like what they do, and I'm giving them a shot, and they have my support. And that was the great Steve Summers. Well, true. it was easy to do. I agree. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was easy to do and fun to do. Well. And, uh, and so... You know, carry on, guys. Thanks for uh, giving me a call. Glad you're Thanks. well. Look forward to the day when we can uh, say hello to one another. And, uh, and uh, glad to hear hands. your voice, my friend. You think that day will ever come when we can shake hands? I think you and I are going to be shaking hands and uh, drinking Manischewitz at Ben's Deli by <laughs> Labor Day. Okay, you got a deal. Done. Be right, well. Carry on. Thanks, guys. <laughs> later, All Steve. right, Steve Summers. There you go. I don't believe we never wished you it's luck. True. It's true. What did we do? Ignored us. You think I and Joe ignored them? And you guys, uh, you guys curried favor to Mike and Chris. Favor you did. To Mike and Chris. You did. We were in the middle of you guys. I we know, were the which, which is why it show. bothered me so much because it was so stupid. I we never did. That. I think that's in your mind. It's not in my mind. I, I wrote about it. It's not in my mind. Just because you wrote about Mark it. Mark and I had long true. talks about it. <laughs> we yes, turn off. That we had long conversations about it. That you, Joe and I would never wish you luck or talk to. We talked to you all the time. Joe and every Evan. Show. I'm talking the early yes. years, yeah, 2007, yeah. 2008. I recall. Once we were number one, everyone kissed our ass <laughs> and talked to us. You know the great, the best example of that happening. Yeah, Real ahead. quick, I'll tell you a quick a radio story. Sure. So when Boom and I started the show, Chris Carlin. He really wanted to get the job to host it. He was very upset that they didn't pick him. I think him. he was filling in a lot after Yeah, uh, he was very upset Imus. that they didn't pick him to host the show. Okay. So to to try to you know make him feel better, Chernoff decided that he would be our update guy. Mm -hmm. He did not want to be the update guy. But we didn't. We just doing our thing. We didn't know, right? So we were doing the show, I think, from Carolina. During uh, you know, Boomer would do the Monday night games on radio. So Tuesday morning... We would do the show from the road. It was me, Al Dukes, and Boomer. And Carlin stayed back in New York. This is when we were in Astoria still. So one day on the air, I refer to him as Mongo from Blazing Saddles. And he did not like that reference. Mm -hmm. To the point where 
We talked to him on the hotline from North Carolina. Please don't call me Mongo ever again. I don't like it. And we're just busting chops like, well, if you don't like it, you don't like it. Fine. Tell us off air. We'll work it. We, we won't call you Mongo again. <laughs> and it became a huge to-do where he started doing a lot of things that a lot of other people were doing. You know, pro-Mike, anti-me and Boomer. So it wasn't working out. So Jerry Recco got the job. Carlin was put at another shift. He wasn't fired or anything, right? So he kept his job. But Carlin badmouthed me everywhere he went to the point of it was just silly to do it. It made no sense. But he badmouthed me everywhere. All right, because he didn't understand the type of show we were doing. Didn't go, it was against his you know, grain of being a Mike and Chris producer for all those years. So all of a sudden, Mike announces he's going to be leaving for the first time. And now Carlin thinks he has a chance to become maybe alone or maybe with someone part of the new afternoon show. But he recognizes that he's been bandmouthing me for years. Right. And he thinks he better get my good graces if he has any shot for the job, thinking that I'm going to go to management, which I never would have done, and say, you cannot hire Carlin. He's been bandmouthing me for years. Right. right? So he gets my number from Al Dukes. And he reaches out to me. Love what you do. <laughs> Took me a while to understand and figure out, you know, what you, how you do a show. Right. It was so new to me. My bad for all the bad things <laughs> I said. I think the show is great, and I totally get it now. Looking forward to seeing you and working, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, first off, I would never do that to someone right. unless there was like a mortal enemy. I'm not gonna stop you from getting the job, mm -hmm. right? And I told him it was so transparent. Like, Oh, so you called him out on yeah. it? So you texted him or called I, him I back? I said, Chris, I don't care if you get the job or not. I worry about mornings right. at the time, right? right? And I was like, come on, man. It was so fake. It's like so transparent. Just, ugh. I'll never forget that. And then he didn't get the job, and I think he went back to bashing me. <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget that. Yeah, there were two guys that thought that was the case who were up for afternoons. When Russo first left, you know, Sid Rosenberg was this close to, teaming to with getting Mike? the job to be with Mike. Right. And that would have been a very, that would have been, a, I think, a good show, actually. Yeah, Sid was very close to being Mike's partner. Uh, there's another story around that. I got to think if I want to tell on the air. I probably don't. Um, but, yeah, Sid, Sid thought he had the job. Mm. And then I believe they went to Mike one last time and said, look, we'll hire Sid. And we think it will be great. But if something happens, you're getting fired. Mm. And Mike wasn't willing to go to the mat for him. And that's why Sid did not become the afternoon guy. Interesting. He was that close to get being the afternoon guy. It was going to be Mike and Sid. That was right when Mike and, went solo for a long and, time. By the way, and that deal was done. Mm. He was going to be the new afternoon guy. Wow. Well, yeah, with Mike. Right, 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 right. And they went to Mike. They said, hey, if Sid messes up, it's on you. You want to put your career on that? I know, sir. <laughs> and Sid's been great since. And good to his credit. He's conquered all of his demons and does a great job where he's at and should be there knocking wood for a very long time. And he and I get along great. He's a, a good friend. So, yeah, he was this close, though. I still take issue with you claiming that Joe you guys, and you, I... You guys kiss Mike's we ass. We didn't do anything. Ugh, it was embarrassing. No, I think the problem is we didn't do anything. But not doing anything nah. doesn't mean we're kissing Even the someone's fact that you and Mike or... talked to each other about reading Truman's book... Well, what, do you think, what do you think that was? If I gave you a book to read and you liked it, we would talk about it, too. Hey, Mike, can we get together and talk about Truman's book together? That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would, because it's such a fascinating book. Anyway. Do you want to read it? Uh, historical David Days McCullough. of WFAN.